Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra today, what is the Jordan normal form. And um, if you haven't watched the video, what is diagonalization, that's perfectly fine. But basically what I'm trying to explain today is why the notion of the Jordan normal form is very natural. It comes up when you try to answer a very natural question and it shows you in the end that basically all matrices are Okay, let's just jump right into it. Let's say you have a matrix, something like this. Could be of any size, but why not stay with two, two by two? And you're wondering about, well, a matrix is nothing else than a linear map, but you kind of have chosen a coordinate system. So maybe what is uh, kind of like what is the equivalence class of this matrix up to base change. So what matrix actually is the same up to change of coordinate system? What are the equivalence classes under conjugation? That's another way of saying it. Meaning just um, if you find, can you find a matrix P such that M, N and M are related by this expression. It's just, this just means up to base change, M and M are the same. Seems to be a very natural question matrices are kind of only defined up to base change. So why not study them up to base change? Um, but if you think about it a little bit, it also appears to be a pretty complicated question. Well, of course, if you have two matrices and you find your matrix P, then yeah, that's great, then you are happy. Um, but how to find the matrix P in the first place? And even worse, if there is no matrix P and it really doesn't work, how could you ever check that? It, it might be that well, let's say I'm trying to do that and I'm just too stupid to find the matrix P. So how can I ever check that this is where the two matrices are equivalent up to base change? And the answer, and that's what makes the Jordan normal form so amazing, and it doesn't really fall out of this blue as you usually see it in whenever in your first linear algebra, algebra class, the answer is given by the Jordan normal form. So in answer to answer this, what is the equivalence under base change? You just need to compute the Jordan normal form. So let me run you through an example. So co consider this matrix here. It depends on the parameter A. Um, it depends on the parameter A. Um, and you can check that the, I mean, the two by two matrix is you calculate the characteristic polynomial, the eigenvalues are one plus minus A. So in almost all cases, in almost all cases, you are happy A is not zero, you have two different eigenvalues. For A equals four, you would get, for example, for A equals four, you would get uh, uh, one plus square root of four and one minus square root of four. This is three or one. You have two different eigenvalues and yeah, you are happy because this just means you have two different eigenvectors and you have two different eigenvectors that you can just find the right P matrix by putting the eigenvectors in the rows and it will, will rotate your uh, your coordinate system such that your eigenvectors are, are uh, the x, y axis in this case. Um, for a equals zero, this is a bit bad. I mean, for a equals zero, you only get one eigenvector value anyway, one, but you can only also check that you only get one eigenvector, namely this guy here. And you can see it in the picture. It's this minus one two axis, it roughly goes like here. So this is again the action of R uh, of M on R squared for A equals one, of course. And it kind of does like this. And here along this axis, you can see the, eigen, the eigenvector. So you only have one eigenvector. So there's, you only have one eigenvector. There's, there's no way you can ever make this. Um, I mean, this I, one eigenvector doesn't form a, a coordinate system for R2. So you can't diagonalize this matrix for A equals one. So what on earth can you do with this matrix? It's kind of, kind of the question you need to answer for A equals one. Uh, the point is, what is the best approximation to a diagonal matrix? So let's just check. So this matrix for A equals one doesn't want to be diagonalizable. So maybe we should try to answer the question uh, for, for A equals zero doesn't want to be diagonalizable. So maybe we should answer the question um, what is the best approximation to a diagonal matrix? And the best approximation to a diagonal matrix is a Jordan block. And the Jordan block is nothing else than the things of this form. 
you have a, you have some value on the diagonal, which is the corresponding eigenvalue. It's of a certain size, and on the next diagonal, you have once, and otherwise, it's, it's just it's just zero. So it's almost diagonal, right? If you would ignore those ones here, then it would be diagonal. Uh, Jona blocks can come in any size. From a small one, from two by two, three by three, four by four, and so on. And these are very simple. You just you just do the calculation. So this guy has only one eigenvector. So whatever you do, whenever you see such a Jordan block somewhere, this is not diagonalizable. No way. You just have one eigenvector. It's two by two. So you are lacking one more eigenvector in order to to make the the axes the eigenvectors. And actually, get, it, it actually get, gets worse, right? So you have three by three, and it is just one eigenvector. And here you have four by four, and it just have one eigenvector. You, you, you can't even reduce those any further to, to this guy. So you, you can't, reduce, can't reduce it to this by, 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 by kind of finding, um, well, by what I mean with that is something like finding something like where you have two by two jawline block and whatever, like the one here. This just doesn't work. You're lacking eigenvectors. And similarly, you can't go from here to here. This just doesn't work. You're lacking eigenvectors. So this, these things seem to be the kind of easiest possible. They're almost diagonal. And you kind of can't reduce them any first. So um, the guess here would be is maybe these are the basic building blocks of, of any matrix. And that's exactly true. These are the basic building blocks of any matrix, and that's called the Jordan theorem. Um, so let, let's just expect that this is kind of the easiest possible case that we will see. And the Jordan theorem is then nothing saying then, yes, this is the easiest possible case. And so first of all, yes, this is the easiest possible case. Uh, there are certain matrices, matrices which just don't want to reduce any further. And the, the other part of the statement is this also exists for any matrix. So you can always bring a matrix in this form, and let's call it a drawdown form, where on each diagonal you have a drawdown block, which could be of various sizes. So you can you could definitely have something like a, a one by one drawdown block and a 10 by 10 drawdown block and a, another one by one drawdown block. And the Jordan block depends on the eigenvalue. Okay, so each Jordan block, each eigenvalue ha might have a certain Jordan block. And the statement is that this thing exists for any matrix. You can always find a base change matrix to bring it on Jordan form. It is unique up to the ordering of the blocks, meaning I could put this one by one block also after the 10 by 10 block. I can swap those two, for example, by just permuting them. Can the size and the corresponding Jordan blocks and the number of them is, is, is unique. And it is a complete invariant under base change. And that, that's, that's amazing because that just means, well, it's, it's, not, it's not quite amazing. It's amazing because it, I will show you next time or in another video that you can actually compute the, the Jordan normal form explicitly from a given matrix by an algorithm. And then this is exciting because then in order to check whether two matrices are similar, you just need to compute the, the, the Jordan normal form of that matrix. So it's a complete invariant on the base change. This, this is pretty amazing. Um, okay, let me finish with one example or with kind of the idea behind Jordan blocks. Why almost all matrices are diagonalizable? Well, let's analyze the two by two case again. And I want to think of this as being the complex plane. I, I can only draw two dimensional, but this should be uh, it's, it's complex. So not the complex plane, the C squared. So the complex plane times the complex plane, the four dimensional space. Uh, I just can't illustrate it, but let, 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 let's just think it is complex, complex axis times complex axis. And the Jordan blocks of a two by two matrix, well, how many choices do you have? Okay, let's let's do it. Two by two matrix. You could have well two eigenvalues, and you have to fit them into the matrix. So the Jordan blocks for two eigenvalues are of one by one, and they are just diagonal. So as soon as you have two eigenvalues, 
Um, the Jordan normal form is a diagonal matrix, so your matrix is diagonalizable. If you have just one eigenvalue, then you have two choices what the Jordan block could look like. Um, so lambda, it could be like this, or it could be like this. And both cases will appear. Okay. And again, here are the Jordan blocks. So in this case, Jordan blocks are very small. In this case, everything is a Jordan block. That's it. Let's say it again. For lambda one not equal to lambda two, each Jordan block is at least of size one. So you have to fit it into the matrix. So there's only one option is diagonalizable. And if I want to think of this as being C squared, meaning the potential eigenvalues, then except on this line, so everywhere here, 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 everywhere else, I'm always in this situation. So everywhere else, my matrices are diagonalizable because I'm, I'm just plotting the, the, this is just plotting basically the, the Jordan blocks. For instance, here at minus one, one, the equivalence class up to base change is just this matrix because I can always diagonalize any matrix with the eigenvalues minus one and one to, to this form. Um, at this point here, um, which should be minus two minus one, Here's an example of a matrix which would sit in minus two, minus one. And you might say now, oh, wait, you just told us this is diagonalizable. You can check that this matrix actually is diagonalizable, but I just gave you an example for a matrix which could sit on this point. And the only kind of, and almost everywhere, right? I just shoot randomly somewhere here or here, you will almost always hit uh, uh, something that that is diagonalizable. And if you just think of having your matrix, you don't know what it is, and you just throw it randomly on, on this plane, it will land somewhere where it is diagonalizable. This is kind of an infinitely thin line anyway. And even if you, by coincidence, end on this line, like here on, on 1.1, one, one, 1. 1, where both eigenvalues are 1, you still have two options. It could be either this case, or it could be this case. So two trivial drawdown blocks or uh, one non-trivial Jordan block, and they are not equivalent. Not equivalent. Uh, and that's kind of a nice statement, right? You just think of your Jordan, Jordan type of a matrix, um, but, but, but just you have some hyperplanes in your, your higher dimensional uh, space. This is just two by two, this is just C2. And almost always you will hit something that is diagonalizable. And sometimes you end up on those hyperplanes and you have certain choices for the Jordan blocks, but the Jordan blocks completely parameterize you know, the equivalence classes of matrices up to base change. And the only missing ingredient would be, can we actually compute the Jordan form? Um, but this is the topic of another video. Thank you very much for now and hope to see you next time.